Okay, so uh, maybe I'll get a, at least a warming up. Um, so um, I'm Wenjin Chu. I'm a senior director for technology strategy at Futureway. But today, um, mostly going to talk to everyone about Open Wallet Foundation. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe uh, the first part will be what it is. Um, it's a very new project. It's officially started uh, in February. Um, and then three days ago now, <laughs> um, we have the first um, code contribution or a project proposal uh, in our GitHub now. Uh, so really early days, um, and so what I will probably uh, provide is uh, some background information and some of the ideas or visions that we think what uh, uh, a wallet means and how we can think about what, uh, you know, what are the, the applications and what role it can play. Um, so that will be a little bit of a sort of a imagination. Uh, it's uh, not quite reality yet. Um, but hopefully uh, we can you know, at least share and start to think about uh, what are the right ways for this community to be, um, to be properly formed and how we run them, etc. So we very much like to hear your feedback and questions and, and any suggestions. Okay, so with that, um, I had a similar kind of a presentation yesterday. Um, a lot of information will look very, very the same. Um, I would uh, probably add a little bit of a, a, a slight differences um, uh, if you happen to be in that uh, session as well. I know at least one person <laughs> there. But uh, um, anyway, so that's, uh, that's my talk here. So uh, again, very beginning, uh, we had uh, the, the earliest idea about this. It's really coming from many, many of the existing communities, open source, as well as in standards, um, in a uh, lot of uh, government and other um, uh, organizations that have been working on identity, for example, and then um, the, the financial and banking sector, uh, and uh, all the blockchains and cryptos, etc., all have some, you know, a lot of work done in the last, I don't know, at least a, a decade of time. Um, so they are the uh, really building a lot of the, the building blocks of this. And uh, the, the idea of an open source of blockchain, uh, sorry, open source wallet um, started in, um, in OSSEU in Dublin. And uh, um, uh, um, Daniel Goshire, unfortunately, he uh, he couldn't be here. Uh, really, is the leading person to sort of uh, gather us around under this one banner, right? Open wallet and, and the open source wallet as the focus point. And so that's the beginning of the this project. Um, uh, in this morning's uh, keynote, you will see open wallet also highlighted in the AWF Digital Trust Initiative. Uh, so here is. Uh, um, diagram of uh, most of the uh, communities involved. Uh, I personally worked with uh, you know Open Wallet, but also Trust of IP. Uh, know quite well some of the work in uh, Hyperledger, Diff, um, and then uh, confidential computing um, and, and C2PA, which I also am a fan of. Um, uh, you know, I'll probably you know, mention some of their work uh, in the talk as well. Okay, so what is a open wallet? And this is my understanding. I, I present this first time in the sort of open source uh, in finance forum last December uh, of understanding really two things. One is uh, a, a wallet that we, we are familiar with. We have a lot of a visualization of it. Um, but uh, how about, you know, general purpose, right? Put, the things together that I, uh, as a user, I can conveniently um, use it. So this usability um, and a personal um, touch to those, I think is very important. So that would be one aspect of it. The other one I think is a proprietary versus open source and open standard. Um, that's a common scene. And even if, you know, a lot of our government organizations or many different uh, communities uh, devote a lot of energy into many building blocks and components of a wallet. 
um, until they are really uh, composed together in a convenient package. Um, I think it's going to be a very you know, it's going to be a challenge for for the long run. So we hope the open wallet community can be that long term home um, to to have a sustainability of the projects um, involved here. Um, I'm trying to look for like the initial like uh, where the word wallet come from. Um, unfortunately, the you know the the, uh, the the examples or the uh, that people come up with is uh, you know the, the, these uh, from maybe Greek words and etc. And we have a sack and carrying variable things with us. Um, and 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 I would like to say like an, a, in. You know, other than the wallet, we should also consider a purse. That may be actually a better name, because then you have um, you're not constantly thinking about like a cause or money, but really a sack that you can carry stuff. And so here are some of the examples that we can carry things, digital objects we can carry, um, a carry in the sense of like you feel like this is under your control, right? In the end of the day, it's really about the control and how you can make use of them. Um, and so, you know, this chart simply shows the, some of the type we've been talking about, or the community have been talking about, um, and also different form factors they may show up uh, eventually. Uh, so that's uh, also like a very important keep in mind. Um, the, uh, the, the software program that, uh, uh, you know, the Open Wallet Foundation would like to uh, help um, curate or, and, and integrate and produce, um, we we ex trying to explain that with analogy of a browser. Um, and probably, you know, the, the middle section is what the, the Open Wallet Foundation trying to uh, the least focus on. And so those are the software components that um, will implement a lot of standards. Uh, there are a lot of technical stuff, whether, you know, it's from, you know, from verified credentials, um, driver license, right? Um, uh, Ethereum <laughs> tokens, um, uh, credit card, etc. Or uh, uh, it, basically, all those words and protocols represent a type of system behind it, and, and they 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 somehow you know influence our life, and they need to be be visualized and, and make it easy for us. And so that's our to, to us that's the role of the wallet, and then the software SDKs in the middle are simply a enabler, right? So imagine um, uh, some uh, app developer may want to have a video you know, presentation of some kind of these of the uh, digital objects um, today to make that very secure and and reliable and you know, preserving privacy uh, is a challenge, very difficult to do. So this software hopefully can allow them to have a much easier task of focus on the application and build, you know, really uh, trustworthy applications. Um, and that can be literally a, a, like a digital wallet as an app, or some people call it super app because it has lots of things in it. Or it can simply be my, you know, um, uh, uh, sort of messaging app, my games, uh, whatever people are doing every day, uh, could in in uh, embed a part of wallet functionality in it too. So um, I, I want to just make sure that uh, we are not, uh, you know, constantly thinking about all these things somehow all unified in, in some way. But basically, this will be the, a new framework. Uh, to sort of unlock, right? Um, I, I use the key as a metaphor for my uh, for my uh, title of the talk, but also uh, thinking of that way as a way to unlock a new type of applications. Um, there is a set of rules that the governments uh, also want to. Um, sort of uh, provide. Uh, we think that's also crucial. Um, so uh, two easy aspects of that the regulation, uh, one is in uh, the valid or uh, uh, authoritative identity. So naturally, that is a very governmental um, uh, function. Uh, the other one would be, for example, for regulation of financial services. Um, so all those will represent some kind of a rule. We would like to see those rules transparent and standardized so that we uh, can make that easy for uh, for adoption uh, again in the app as well as in you know in, in consumer adoption space right. 
Um, so uh, I think those, you know, this, this captures very uh, well of the, the goals of the foundation want to do. Um, and this is simply summarizes uh, the mission statement. Um, we're, we're all working on this. This is our first version. And uh, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, if Sorry. <laughs> Someone's listening. Um, um, uh, user choice, security, and, and privacy. So I think those three things are quite important in what uh, the, uh, the software foundation of the Wally need to be. Um, you, you are all very familiar with this, so I'll, I'll probably skip most of it. Um, but I, want, I do want to mention there's a one thing that's uh, uh, quite uh, unique. Uh, we are trying to start a new uh, government advisory council. So this council is, uh, we, we mirror the uh, similar function in IETF. If you remember uh, internet and also internet governance, um, the, 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 the phrase we used was a, a multi-stakeholder organization. Right? We don't have, we are distributed. Uh, decentralized, there's no one uh, authority, uh, but uh, the, how do we get all the uh, different stakeholders, not just technical people, but also, um, you know, regulation as well as communities and um, uh, organizations who are pushing, for example, the, the UN's, you know, development goals, for example. A lot of those do not have a easy identifiable um, um, representation in our technical uh, communities. So we want to have a space for, for that as well. Uh, to ensure that uh, the work we do have a uh, long-term su sustainability. Um, here are the, our <laughs> current um, sponsorships and also the community. Uh, so we're really um, happy to see a lot of uh, uh, our uh, associate uh, sponsors. They are really not just an icon, but uh, they represent uh, many, many organizations who have been working on uh, these questions uh, from v uh, many different perspectives. So uh, with them aboard, we, we, we hope that we can uh, unify the um, um, you know, uh, contributions as well as uh, knowledge we've uh, accumulated um, in, in different areas. But eventually, how do we you know, make them uh, represent in code and running code, good, good quality, so that they can uh, see uh, deployment and, and use uh, in actual uh, products we build. Um, so this is a, a growing uh, list. Uh, now let me turn on to see, say about um, the role of wallet. So this is uh, why we are saying it's, it holds the key. Um, again, I, I find the easiest way would be go back to the web browser analogy. So in the web ecosystem, we've uh, we've defined a whole bunch of uh, you know ways to represent these digital uh, objects uh, or we may call it URLs but the objects today all the valuable things sit in the server side so the server has a whole set of things uh, available to that um, the client or the browser size are not very secure um, and uh, uh, which means that uh, when we as a individuals, you know, operate things um, in the user interface, we are constantly involved in logins, authentications, authorizations, and then all that system have a lot of issues on, um, on, on security, but also like uh, the entire infrastructure is just not built uh, with resilience in it. Um, so a lot of work today it represents the patchwork of uh, trying to solve those problems, right? And so the key, again, you know, to unlock this new opportunity is really how do we fix that problem on the client? And uh, so uh, if we could have a representation of what that module is, I would say that module probably the best represented by a wallet. Because the wallet, to us, it holds things securely, and it's under our control. So that helps two things, you know, it, it will hold valuable things for us, but also it allow as a convenient way to exercise control. And that is really the key for, if we want privacy, that's the key, because, you know, how do you say no? How do you say, well, you don't need to know that? 
uh, that uh, way of uh, expression or basically be part of a protocol and negotiation able to say that uh, it's extremely important and we need a way to a tool to do that and that tool i think is the wallet um, uh, consent, you know, we get uh, all type of consent all the time, but really the only way I can see the consent mostly is just say yes, um, it's really not a choice. Secondly, sometimes they give me choice, but the choice I have to click and dig into it and go a lot of things, right? It cannot be automated for us. Um, the other side server is fully automated, right? But on um, client side, we can't. And so that is uh, another way. It's very hard to, uh, to really go into the consent page and choose exactly what I want. And that's very hard to do. So I would like to see a day that I can set the rules or the consent level I want, and my wallet will automate everything else for me. And so I would never need to see it um, uh, pop up and you know stop my what I'm doing and um, conveniently. Uh, we were talking about um, open SSF and the initiative trying to get um, uh, open source code. Uh, have a good uh, provenance data, so you know we know where the code checking happened, who developed it, who tested it, right? And you know that sounds easy. We should be able to all automate, but one of the key thing is like identify people um, who signing it, right? Basically, this is extremely challenging work to do. Is distributing, uh, you know, put billions of keys to uh, all of us in a secure, reliable way. That's very, very hard to do. And I think uh, I, I want to basically pose that as a one angle to look at why the wallet is very important. And once we do that, uh, we should uh, reuse that functionality over and over you know, in very convenient way, because that's very costly to, to achieve. Once we do that, we shouldn't give it away. And again, requires us to have uh, something we can hold on to, and that's the wallet. So uh, I hope I've touched on most of the things. I'll probably see one more thing. Uh, it is also a personal interface because that will be the app we actually touch, uh, literally touch and do, right? Uh, if we want to disclose things, I want to do payment, um, uh, all that, there need to be an interface, and that interface need to be intuitive and convenient in design for us, not uh, uh, a representation of you know, how the technical protocol works. So um, how do we conveniently do the right thing um, and by default, right? That, I think that's also a major challenge and I hope uh, the, the wallet you know, community can uh, help solve that problem too. Okay, uh, so in abstract terms, we will say that's a you know, value aligned, privacy centric, and um, authentic with high level of trust. So hopefully those are the, uh, you know, in very abstract level we can achieve. Okay, um, so last time, I have no time to talk into this at all. So this is a architectural reference framework by European Union. Uh, one of the uh, um, government uh, that's really trying to do digital uh, ID services to all citizens in sort of like a universal uh, way is the European Commission and, and the European Union. And so this is a, a diagram showing their architecture. And in this diagram, uh, the, the pink ones are regulators. So think of their government agencies regulating how things should be issued, etc. What are the rules you have to comply? Um, the first column, the yellow box is here uh, with the uh, impossible acronym EAA. That is, uh, A I think is attestation. <laughs> okay, so they're basically like, um, you know, if somebody give you a driver license or somebody give you a diploma, they're the parties that issue these uh, authorized also, you know, uh, information. And uh, these information are extremely powerful because with those information, um, all of a sudden that uh, you can uh, basically start to have control of how to use them and exercise and use them for services, right? Um, so the, the, the purple block then is uh, the wallet. And so you, if you look at the, the rest of the, the right side, um, you have user, 
relying party that's you know like your um, your uh, merchant for example if you're buying things right and uh, the wallet provider would be the developer the the product or the app you download for example um, and so all that involve around one thing if you see all the arrows go that's the wallet uh, so hopefully this is like a even though it's all techno jungle here, but uh, uh, it shows that the wallet is really in the center of a lot of things. Um, so hopefully that picture is, uh, um, is actually meaningful. <laughs> um, and uh, as an example, um, I want to you know, acknowledge uh, John Jordan did a, a keynote this morning, and this is exactly the type of work that I was referring to um, that's you know, very successful in British Columbia, and I hope the you know, same thing can happen in EU and many countries. And so that provides one type of really things that we will see in the wallet. And this is an enabling tool because, you know, imagine like I go to a random web page, I maybe want to find a, um, a t-shirt I want to buy. Today has a lot of uh, uh, issues. We have to go co open an account. You have to type in a bunch of uh, your private information plus payment information, right? And so to the merchant, that is a uh, burden for them. Uh, to us, it's all our private information out there. Each one is a hacking target. They eventually will all lose it. Um, it's just a matter of time they will lose it one day, right? So we are leaking tons and tons of information. And uh, uh, there's no reason that they need to hold that information in the back end. So we could have a uh, really a good wallet which will allow these identities to be accepted universally. And that way you don't, you know, we don't ever need to create another account again. Um, so the account will be, even you know, if they exist, there will be a, a relationship between you and, and, and the merchant rather than uh, something that happened to be you know, that the place that, that they hold private information. So that database hopefully will go away. Um, yeah, so uh, with that uh, note, I want to basically lead to, you know, Basically, look at like what are new applications we can do with that, uh, with that kind of uh, system in place. Remember, um, again, now we look at the new architecture. We have uh, all the servers or platforms out there, but we also have our own identity, not an account in somebody's system, but in my own phone, and I'm owning the uh, information that is accepted and believed, right? And so that enables users to imagine all different uh, behaviors and activities that we can do. It also imagines the, uh, sorry, uh, help the uh, app developers to really imagine new services. So if we want to build a uh, instant messaging or social media or um, uh, web uh, e-commerce, all of that, we can imagine new way of doing these things. And they may even be very new uh, business models. Uh, so all these are, I think, in, within the reach. So I want to just, um, I hope I have a better um, like pictures of everything, but I hope um, we've talked about government services and, and uh, we were just chatting before this uh, about um, uh, medical, uh, so medical, Medicare in, in BC is a public, and so everybody, uh, every resident can get a car, but apparently there are more cars than residents, um, so that is uh, you know, a problem, and that's because these, uh, this authentication and uh, uh, processes uh, are, not, are not very foolproof. And same thing happened to all the systems we built. So um, trustworthy digital services uh, allow the, uh, all these to run much more efficiently, and then we can you know, see the rules of protecting um, uh, privacy. Uh, a lot of that really into uh, how, how we can control our private data through the wallet. The second, of course, is the financial services. I'll probably skip this now. We've talked quite a little, uh, a lot about this. Um, but you know, I imagine the uh, all the different services uh, that's happening. We are seeing more and more that's uh, offered as a digital service nowadays. Yeah. Um, so the third type will be tickets and travel. 
Uh, so these are the things that uh, we uh, used to be a piece of a paper. It's a holding of some you know, service or holding of some asset. So that representation and all of that can be all fully automated um, and allows the buying and using of that without going through a central system. Uh, authentic content is really interesting. So um, I, I want to mention the work that's done in another Linux Foundation project, C2PA, that's a content um, uh, con uh, coalition for content uh, provenance and authenticity. <laughs> uh, so basically this allows a, a uniform or standardized way of uh, specifying metadata. So um, I know some of the camera manufacturers are uh, starting to put that into their cameras. If you take a picture, the picture comes with a signature on which camera and what time these are taken. Um, and then all the picture processing software allow you to basically authorize, you know, you are the author of the, uh, the, the photographer taking the picture, you, what happened to it, etc. So that provenance allow the content to be authentic. So we, we can you know, help prevent uh, uh, fake media, uh, fake news, um, that sort of thing, but also um, allow creators to assert authorship to it. Uh, similarly for software, right? If we open source software, want to keep the provenance, a similar kind of principle will work. And the important thing of making these kind of systems universally uh, convenient to use is that you have a wallet that you can sign things at the, without you even need to you know go actually do this step. You will be very conveniently uh, doing this. That's the key. Okay, um, digital assets. I'm going to keep that as well. Uh, healthcare services. We talked about that. Um, one of the really important problem of we as a, in the healthcare service is that how what kind of information we need to keep around uh, so that uh, you know basically your your medical record and information uh, who can access it and and uh, uh, who can you share to and so with yourself in control you can al allow you to actually re uh, um, making those decisions and services much more easy. Um, it also allows some of the the hardest problem, um, easier to solve for, uh, for remote medicine. So all of those I think is very crucial. Um, and then literally keys. Uh, we <laughs> so keys are you know our oldest thing that we used to physically carry around, and uh, if we want to make those things digital, uh, it, we need to be very careful that these things are not proprietary. Uh, because uh, anything proprietary, I think, eventually will become a choke point, <laughs> will come back and becomes an issue. Uh, we will, you know, I, I think so that is very important uh, to see these keys as standardized and we have a portability. Um, so if we want to, for example, use a different service or use a, um, a, a, a new key or uh, to a new app or that, you want to be able to carry your key around and go to a different place, right? So that's also very important. And um, control privacy. Um, there are a lot of talk about uh, AI today. Um, now AI involves many, many different issues related to privacy, also related to uh, f <laughs> fake media. Um, and authentication based on content, for example, is almost impossible now, uh, especially with all the uh, um, automation that's, uh, that's happening. Um, so we, uh, if you look at the, the, the backend system, how we do uh, authentication, uh, most of the time today we do intuitive authentication uh, based on, for example, if you, you know, receive a phone call, you still identify a person by the voice. And that's going to be very, very tricky very soon. Um, secondly, we use facial content like that. Uh, that's also very difficult. Um, and so when we disclose information, the, the question is not like we don't know what information we like or not like to disclose. The problem is that that decision is made extremely difficult. And we are really not meant to do that, right? Or whatever the scheme they provide today is extremely difficult to use. So in practice, we have no control of what happened. Uh, so that needs to change. And the best way to change that is flip the size so that 
um, in a, you know, potentially in the future in the wallet, you can specify precisely like how I want this be uh, working and let the wallet to be the, your agent uh, working for you. It's like a, you have a private lawyer basically and tell them what information you're willing to share and negotiate that way, uh, um, uh, automate it in some fashion. So that's the way I think eventually uh, in order for us to really convenient to have a meaningful control of this, we will need to automate it in that sense. That requires a trusted computing unit within our own control, like for example, you know, a, a some kind of a token or a, a smartphone. Um, we've talked a, a huge amount yesterday on metaverse and the way that uh, if we imagine all the privacy issues we have today. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, many of us will make it dramatically harder. And uh, so I think it will be mandatory to have a strong sense of uh, a, a um, province control entity that uh, we uh, directly involve and control with. And that's the, the wallet, or you can say wallet kind of function that's embedded in your you know, headset or whatever UI you're working with that, um, that allow us to, without even typing and you know, be able to basically through your, um, our um, uh, easy day-to-day -day -day, um, uh, motions and, and expression to express those ideas. So we need to be able to uh, smile and nod and be able to do consent or refusal and negotiation, etc. And so those are the things I think is uh, fundamental if there's any chance that, that the type of uh, really immersive behavior, uh, you know, environment uh, are widely used uh, as, a, as a metaverse would be. And uh, uh, finally, you know, we, we will talk about a whole bunch of things related to AI and trust. Um, how do the the type of uh, so we we can think about you know trust is a very very complicated it's probably a, a totally a separate uh, um, uh, we will have to go through talking about human trust but human trust is so complex because it um, is unbounded problem right this all people will say oh there's a contest but when they talk about contest they tie into a particular system design. Unfortunately, we don't design systems. Uh, you know, consumers and end users don't design the systems. So the type of trust that is expressed to us are essentially trust that the system designer chose. Um, and to change that uh, uh, dynamic, I think uh, it's required to uh, see widespread AI adoption. And that requires us to really start to uh, think about uh, all the type of talk of trust is in the nuance, right? If you um, go to a job interview or a loan application or all the important things humans do, it's never clearly specified because specify exactly what happens there. Uh, it's a, um, it's a, what I call a um, unbounded complexity uh, because all the nuances is extremely important. And each time the nuances may be different, right? And so how do we uh, use AI in which can actually uh, become uh, quite influential to the way we interact or access information, et cetera. Um, the, the, the systems able to produce natural sounding language, which will give you a lot of hint embedded in the language itself. So how do we be able to really, in that case, um, action and, and uh, 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 interact properly, we're going to need the help. And I think the root of that help need to be built into the wallet. And hopefully that will become uh, some kind of a, a core kernel uh, of our um, uh, agents or applications that uh, then we have a whole new class of applications with this ability, you know, built into it. Right? Um, hopefully, these are some examples. Uh, you know, we, we uh, you, you find it useful. Um, I have uh, very little time, but the, basically, this is a summary of more like uh, abstracted terms we use to uh, think about the new opportunities for consumers. That's all of us, creators, like people are creating, you know, new. Um, uh, 
uh, media and, and uh, data objects and the 3D models, right? Uh, music, um, developers who are imagining and designing uh, new applications, and then businesses who run and, uh, you know, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, any of these exams we talk about, maybe uh, move to a new paradigm thinking about the ways that we can make this whole system better. And uh, the, I would invite you to think about, if you go that direction, what are the core components we're going to need? And I, I believe that you will see that a lot of that will be represented in uh, this kind of uh, what I've you know, been calling it the wallet, right? Uh, so that's, uh, that's the important part. Okay, so how do we get involved? Um, here are some of the links for the uh, Bombay Foundation. There's a uh, really nice um, uh, report that just came out of LF Research um, talking about why the world needs another um, open source project and open source wallet. And right now, we need it really right away. Um, there's a Discord and GitHub. I'll give you some of the um, uh, uh, so here's another slide for the for the report. Uh, please uh, take a look on that. Um, some of the uh, more of the um, engineering and technical discussions are happening today. So this is a Discord channel on architecture, um, SIC. Um, and uh, uh, if if you look at this, there's a consensus, verified credentials. Uh, architecture, European identity, um, uh, the W3C standard for verified credentials, high pledger errors, DICOM, a trust spanning protocol that I've been personally involved with uh, quite a bit. OIX is the UK based uh, uh, consortium that's also working on these. Um, Ramo is uh, an open source project uh, for that. Um, again, UDI. Uh, notary, then, yeah, that's a key thing. What is a notary? That's how we used to make information trustworthy, right? How do you prove to somebody? Well, you do go to a notary, so that's cool. Um, yeah, uh, farm worker use case is a cool one. And I, I don't have one here, but we had also refugees. Um, how, do, how do they create some credential to, you know, uh, right on, on the site and be able to actually do something uh, for them? Uh, so those are all very extremely important. And there's a lot of them, you know, this is happening every week. So I, that will be a great place to sort of uh, get involved and get started. Um, and I just mentioned some of these, the way we starting um, code contribution or project proposal is we start to, in the GitHub, uh, make proposals. So uh, these are the two that just showed up um, three days ago, I would say, and hoping that a lot more are coming. Uh, we have a, a, a big pipeline uh, in, in the works right now. We will hopefully see a lot of the contribution coming in. Yeah, that's, uh, I think I'll run out of uh, time, uh, but um, uh, I don't know how much extra time we have, but I open for questions. <laughs> Anyone have questions? If not, I think the key uh, takeaway would be check out our um, uh, uh, you know, community. Again, it's very, very new, so if you keep around, we will probably have more news coming around. Uh, it's a global community, so you see a lot of uh, European and North American um, working on uh, bring, you know, a lot of Asia uh, players in as well. We will hope to see this becomes um, a, a, a foundational uh, piece uh, that enables a lot of uh, uh, open source projects and a new application to be able to, uh, yeah, I use the phrase, conveniently do the right thing, right? Uh, we know what the right thing is. It's just very, very difficult right now, but uh, we, we need to change that. So thank you so much. <laughs>